Hello, today we're going to look at factoring trinomials. We're going to start with factors of the form x squared plus bx plus c, where the leading coefficient, the coefficient of x squared, is 1. So what we're going to recall from foiling that x plus g times x plus h is x squared plus g plus hx plus gh. So if I foil it out, combine my x terms in the middle, I get this guy. So b, oops, yeah, so b here, here, is g plus x, and c is g times h. So what this means is that I'm going to be looking for g and h when I'm given b and c. So I want to find two numbers that multiply to c and add to b. So for example, x squared plus 5x plus 6. I want two numbers that multiply to 6 and add to 5. We start with factors of 6 because there are a lot less factors of 6 than there are pairs of numbers that add to 5. So there are four sets of factors of 6. There's 1 and 6, 2 and 3, negative 1 and negative 6, and negative 2 and negative 3. I want the pair that adds to 5, so I want 2 and 3. So if I go back to my product, I know that I'm going to have five, uh, x plus 2 and x plus 3. So if I... Um, when I check my answer, I can always FOIL it out, and if I FOIL it out, I will get exactly x squared plus 5x plus 6. So as another example, x squared plus 7xy minus 8y squared. So this one has some y's involved where the other one didn't. So how that comes into play is that instead of x plus a and x plus b, it's x plus ay and x plus by. So we want two numbers whose product is negative 8, in this case, and whose sum is 7. So to multiply two numbers to get negative 8, one of them must be positive, one of them must be negative. In order for those two numbers to add to a positive 7, the larger number must be positive and the smaller number must be negative. So there's only two possibilities, negative 8 and 1, or negative 4 and 2, and of course, I put the negatives on the wrong ones. So 8 and negative 1, or 4 and negative 2. The one that adds to 7, of course, is 8 and negative 1. So this will give us x minus 8y times x plus 1y, which is just x plus y. The other form that we typically see are things like x to the 4th minus 10x squared plus 25. The difference here is that instead of x plus a and x plus b, it'll be x squared plus a times x squared plus b. The first term, variable-wise, is always the square root of the first term. Variable-wise, the second one is the square root of the first term, of the last term, again, variable-wise. So if we go back to the previous one, the x squared plus 7xy minus 8y squared, We've got the x squared and x, and then y squared and y. Okay, so that's always just going to be the square root of the variable. So there is no variable down here, so there's no variable over here. And we want two numbers whose product is 25 and whose sum is negative 10. So again, the product is positive, which means our two numbers have to be the same sign, either both positive or both negative. The fact that they add up to a negative number means they're both negative. So it's either negative 25 and negative 1, or negative 5 and negative 5. And clearly we want the negative 5 and negative 5. So we end up with x squared minus 5 times x squared minus 5 which simplified is just x squared minus 5 squared. Okay. 
So now we're going to look at the more general case, which is where the leading coefficient isn't a 1. So ax squared plus bx plus c. We're going to use a similar method, except we're also going to be adding in factoring by grouping. So we learned factoring by grouping in a previous section, and this is where we really tend to use it. So we look for two numbers whose product is not c, but a times c, and whose sum is still b. So the only difference now at the beginning is I'm going to multiply a times c, and that's the product that we're going to be looking for. So for example, 3t squared minus 7t plus 4. We want two numbers whose product is 12, which remember is 3 times 4, and whose sum is negative 7. So again, the product is a positive number, so the two numbers that I'm multiplying have to both be negative in order to sum to a negative and multiply to a positive. So I've either got negative 12 and negative 1, negative 6 and negative 2, or negative 3 and negative 4. So I want the negative 3 and the negative 4. And now here comes another difference. What we're going to do is we're going to take our middle term and we're going to separate it using our new numbers. And then we're going to end up with four terms, so we factor by grouping. So I separate my negative 7t into negative 3t and negative 4t. And then I use the fact that I'm, separate, I'm going to factor by grouping. So my first term I can factor out a 3t. My second term, I'm going to factor out a negative 4. So if I notice, when I factored out my 3t, I'm left with t minus 1. And in order to get t minus 1 here, I need to factor out the negative as well as the 4. So I have t minus 1 times 3t minus 4. Don't forget that you can always, always, always check your answer by multiplying it out. There is absolutely no reason to get this number wrong the answer wrong because you can always check your answer. So let's try a couple more. 6x squared plus 7xy minus 20y squared. So I want a number whose product is negative 112, uh, 120, sorry, again 6 times 20, and whose sum is 7. So again, the product is negative, so one of my numbers is positive, one of them is negative. The sum is positive, so I know the larger number must be positive. So we can have things like 12 and negative 10, uh, 15 and negative 8, negative 6 and 20. There's a whole bunch of them. But again, I want the one that adds up to 7. And if I notice, that's right here, 15 and negative 8. So again, I'm going to separate my 7xy into 15xy minus 8xy. And then I'm going to look at my first two terms, see what I can factor out of that, a 3x. Look at my second two terms, where I can factor out a negative 4y. So I get this guy. My new GCF, 2x plus 5y and I'm left with the 3x minus 4y. Let's try another one. 6t to the 4th plus t squared minus 12. Product is negative 72. Sum is 1. So again, I need a positive and a negative number. The positive must be the larger number, and they're only off by 1. So that gives me negative 8 and 9. So again, I'm going to split up my t squared into 9t squared minus 8t squared, and factor by grouping. I can factor a 3t squared out of my first term, my first two terms, and I can factor a negative 4 out of my second two. My new GCF, 2t squared plus 3, and I'm left with 3t squared minus 4. Don't forget, foil it out, make sure you get what you started off with. So let's try another one. 6n squared minus 39nm minus 21m squared. If I just started blindly doing my um, process, I would multiply 6 by 21, and I'd have to look for factors of that that added up to negative 39. 
both of those numbers are very large. When you start seeing things like that, you want to stop and say, well, what else can I do? And if I look at my numbers, I will hopefully realize that they have a GCF in common. Each of those three numbers are, are multiples of three. So I'm going to factor out a three, and it's going to make my decisions and my choices a lot easier. So now I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to negative 14 and add up to negative 13. So that's going to be a lot less choices to have to go through. There's only two ways that I can multiply two numbers to get negative 14. And that's either negative 14 and 1 or negative 7 and 2 because I know the sum is negative, so my larger number must be negative. To get negative 13, I want negative 14 and 1. So again, I'm going to split up my negative 13 nm into negative 14 nm plus nm and then factor by grouping. So I can pull out a 2n for my first two terms. I can pull out an m for my second two terms. Notice I do have a GCF here. So my product will be three things. It'll be the number 3, my original GCF, times n minus 7m times 2n plus m. As our last example, we have 15x squared minus 39x cubed plus 18x to the fourth. So again, hopefully you'll recognize that there is a GCF here that we should pull out first. Our GCF happens to be 3x squared. We're left with 5 minus 13x plus 6x squared. So we're looking for two numbers whose product is 30 and sum is negative 13. Those two numbers have to be negative 10 and negative 3. So I'll separate my negative 13 into negative 10 and negative 3. Factor by grouping. I can pull out a 5 from my first two terms. And again, I'm going to pull out a negative 3x so that my signs match up here. So my answer is 3x squared times 1 minus 2x times 5 minus 3x. So read through the book, try out some of the problems, and let me know if you have any questions. Good luck.